There are a lot fewer two-parent families. What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? Almost nobody gets out of love alive. Prisoners' rights is out of sight, out of mind. Is your brain on God? You ain't ready to approach for discussions ever. How they thought black right. families have to have the What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar Reality Gurus, the show where we take a commonsensical approach to issues through complex conversation. I'm your host, G. Cleve. We are here with show number two. The first one was so hot, we had to do a second one. Got a couple of people here. Uh, let's go ahead and get into it, man. I got my man, Anye. I got Andy. We got returning guest, Shay. Reality Gurus. What's going on, folks? Talk to me. Uh, oh, hold on. Wait a minute. We're going to have a caller, too. Uh, don't we got Ian coming in? Let's check. This. Ian, are you there? Yes, sir. I'm uh, here. Okay, we got my man Ian too. He's on the phone. Um, so you know we're going to get into this uh, this situation here. What was big in the news uh, last week? Uh, Amazon um, uh, opening up two more of their headquarters. Uh, I think they have one in Seattle, and the other two are um, going to be opened up in Alexandria, Virginia, and in uh, Long Island City, New York. Uh, now, my understanding is there was a bid, so there was like a lot of states and cities in play to actually land these two locations, and um, what wind up, oh shit, hold on folks, uh, pardon me for a minute. <clears throat> yeah, sorry about that little technical situation there, yeah, you got my camera back? Yeah, we see you. All right, folks. Yeah, so uh, basically it was a bid. Uh, a lot of states were in play. Um, and then we find out that New York City and uh, Alexandria, Virginia, uh, they you know, landed these uh, two locations. But we find out also um, that the people thought they were con. It was a con game being played. That uh, Amazon really had no intentions of having any other of these states in play. New York and Virginia were who they were decided on. But they kind of used this bidding war to kind of, you know, increase you know, uh, 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 the resources that they were going to get from New York and from Virginia, you know, via tax breaks and all that other shit, right? So um, people had some issues with it. Uh, now, Ian. I have wanna... issues with it. Oh, hold on, hold on. Now, Ian, I, well, I say Ian, you know, because we can't see him. Ian had, you know, I saw there was a bit of a post out there where uh, a gentleman, you know, from Seattle, um, where the uh, original headquarters is, um, was explaining that, you know, saying New York City, Virginia, don't do it. Uh, they're not bringing $50,000. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, 50,000 employees making, you know, six figure jobs. They're bringing, I mean, they're not bringing, um, I'm sorry, let me back up. They're not bringing the headquarters here and hiring 50,000 people out of the communities that they're bringing it in. They're bringing 50,000 people with six figure jobs to your area and they're going to change it. They're going to uh, somehow move you out and it's going to somehow be something negative now Ian um, that was something that you posted up there do me a favor man elaborate a little bit on that as far as your feelings you agree that um, Amazon coming to New York City and Alexandria is a, is a negative thing well alright so definitely from the standpoint of somebody who grew up was born and raised and bred in New York and mm -hmm. seeing how the gentrification and how they've how they've how they've kind of pushed this agenda of moving, right? Specifically, brown and black folks, right, out of New York City, by way of moving in organizations and corporations and bringing their own employee and their staffing with them, right? Mm -hmm. We've already seen that happen before, and it's smart business. It's not smart for Amazon to come in and say, okay, well now we have headquarters set up, let's do hiring now. No, it's smart to say we already have fifty thousand high level executive senior jobs set up, right? Well not even, you know, it could be mid level jobs because fifty fifty thousand dollars in New York City is broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So so even a, but even a fifty thousand dollar they they're more likely to import somebody executive right uh, jobs, from Iowa or right? from Denver or, not or from Nebraska. Right who's gonna who's willing to come out here and try it because of the mystique of New York mm -hmm. and, and, and and the the, the, the glory and, you know, Times Square, you know, and come out here and live with a roommate or $50,000 a year, then they ought to bring somebody in who's, you know, 
who's who's a born and bred New Yorker, right? Who's probably brown and black, right? Who's saying, hey, man, I could really use this to help pay for the rest of my mortgage because mm-hmm. I'm about to go under. Um, these Jews are trying to take my property. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, and I think, it had, and, and another thing from my perspective, you know, before I get off the phone, Uh, did we lose him? Yeah, we lost him. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Okay, well, yeah, maybe we might be able to get him back. If not, um, then I'd better just be that. But, Andy, how do you feel about the situation with Amazon coming to Alexandria and uh, Long Island City? You think it's a negative situation, I, or you think uh, we can find some positive in it? I think it's going to be negative as fuck. And me, I don't know. I don't want to sound like... I was a hater because I actually looked up. I was like, oh shit, Amazon's gonna be out here. Let me see what jobs they got. I'm looking, I looked at the customer service, right? There's like a customer service fucking position. Mm-hmm. They say you need a bachelor's degree to be a cu- customer service representative. If y'all get the fuck out of here, like now. with a lot of these fucking jobs and a lot of these situations, I feel like it's gonna be some kind of structural violence thing in the sense of like, yeah, they may not literally kick people out, but they're gonna find means of finding the, op- the price amount. So it'll be like after a while, it'll be like, yo, you know, suddenly a lot of these realtors and whoever owns any kind of building going to be like, you know what? This rent got to go the fuck up. And then once they start seeing all these people come through, because I looked at a lot of those positions, man, it's not it's like software and tech jobs. So unless you're getting a degree in tech or some shit or you just getting like a little bullshit fucking bachelor's degree, there is no place for your ass. So. Yeah. I'm like Amazon may build up may build up this community in the sense, but nah, in, in the scheme of things, nah. I feel like this is going to be a cash grab for anybody who want these new gentrifiers. I think it's going to be a means of like some kind of structural violence in the sense of like they're going to outprice people out of the situation, and it's going to reverberate to like even in a couple of miles around it. Like like I'm not even that far from that from Long Island City. So I can see how the Amazon situation may affect my neighborhood. And my neighborhood is already like, like to get like a fucking single one bedroom apartment is like fucking 1400 essentially. Mm -hmm. So I feel like once this whole fucking Amazon shit is gonna happen, man, it's gonna be a dub for a lot of people because, and I also not trying to be a hater, I actually looked it up and I was just like, yo, let me see if I can get a gig at Amazon. And they need a bachelor degree for the most infinitesimal bullshit, like customer service and like sales associate. I'm like, what the fuck do you need to be like? So nigga need four years of schooling yeah. in yeah. college to be an associate? Related fields, right? Or something to that, or a certain amount of years for, because I just looked it up, or a certain amount of years for that job within that, in that, that, in that experience. Oh. And- and listen, man, there's nothing, I don't see this, I don't see there being nothing wrong with that. You know what a degree shows, right. besides the fact that you're in debt? It shows your dedication. And the truth of the That's matter, it. you can dedicate yourself to something that you probably don't want to do for four years, then it shows that the, your longevity, that you have a sustainability that necessarily someone that doesn't have that will not possess. But I also think that they're pigeonholing themselves as it relates to just asking for someone with a degree, because you have individuals that never have a degree and they have life skills that can offset someone that actually has a degree. Just because you have both of them, you have common sense. So you kind of need the mixture of the two. Yeah, like, it, to me, a lot of the times degrees could kind of be like accredited, like fucking slavery in a sense. Like, oh, okay, yeah, I could do some shit I don't want to do for four fucking years. So, all right, oh, okay, so we're going to hire this person that's willing to do that shit for the rest of their lives and we're going to exploit your ass. Yeah, I get it. Well, no, listen, not listen. what I was saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Manifest that in your head, but that's absolutely not what I was saying. <laughs> well, yeah, listen, this is, this is what I'm saying, man. Um, I, but we even live, or we just talking. No, we are live. We are live. <laughs> you know what it is. You know what it is. You 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 want to you want to fight on air. That's what you want to do. So why don't we do this, man, folks? We were talking about this Amazon situation, right? And then off air, we kind of got sidetracked with a uh, conversation uh, regarding uh, child support. Uh, Miss Shay uh, made a statement that, you know, for the most part, she doesn't think that men have any rights, you know, when it comes to the child support, the custody, that situation. And I disagree. Um, you know, uh, my thoughts is that. Me too. Know, I disagree. Yes. My thoughts is if you got your shit together as a man, right? 
and there's a couple of boxes that got to be checked when you get in front of this, you know, this judge. Some boxes mm -hmm. got to be checked to make sure you satisfy what you need to satisfy for him to make the decision for you to have your custody. I don't see why a judge wouldn't do that. You're giving me situations of guys who may be great fathers, but don't have all of the box checked. They don't satisfy everything. And because of that, the, 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 for them to be able to get, you know, joint custody, full custody or visitation or whatever, the process is taking longer, right? Than it should. And I agree with that. But You're if hoping they, that you have a cooperative daughter's mother when you go into court and all your boxes are checked. Is that you what you're saying? No, what I'm saying is if a judge requires a father to have cert to meet certain criteria, you got to have a place, uh, a stable place to live. You got to have a, a, a room for the child, their own room, right? You got to have, you know, some income, right? You got to have, you know, food, you know, a way to take care of this child when they come to your house, right? If those are the things that judges are looking for before they make the decision on granting you um, custody, that's what I'm talking about. And any man, I think that any man, say again. Do you think it's just that simple? You just walk in a court and say, hey, all my boxes are checked. So why don't I just get custody of my child? Here's the you thing. Really if, think here's the thing. If it's not that easy, you tell me of a situation where a man has his, all his shit together and he's having a problem. When you in, off, off, air, off air, we discussed about a situation with someone who didn't have all their boxes checked. You well, can't. There's many situations where, and I've, I've actually had individuals, see, here's my thing, um, G. I think that the way women, and, and, and I'm a woman, obviously, and I'm a woman with four children. I think that a lot of mindsets, women use the children as a pawn to get back at the man when the relationship is over, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, when you go into court, what ends up coming up in court, even though all of your boxes are checked, it's things that happen in a relationship that will preclude you from getting what you need right away. Mm -hmm. So if you think in your head that you're going to walk into court, right, and just say, hey, all of my boxes are checked, and you have a disgruntled daughter's child's mother, whomever, right, and that everything is going to be awarded to you because all of your boxes are checked, you're misunderstanding. That's no different than taking someone that has an education and putting them in front of a judge and saying, hey, Look at me. Look at this grandiose thing that I have going on and thinking that I'm going to get what I want. It's not reality. Okay, so let me bring uh, let me bring the fellas in here. So, so um, you know, I already see that I disagree. Um, I, 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 she still hasn't given me an example of an individual that's gone into court having all his boxes checked and got, you know, rejected and it was rejected. Now, I, I understand yeah. that there may be a disgruntled woman and it may delay the process some. But it's not going to take years. That's what I was suggesting. How you feel about that, Ani? You think this, it's, it, that we don't have no fucking rights? That the minute we get in there, that if we don't, even if we got our boxes checked, we ain't getting our kids, we can't. You think that's the case? That's not yeah. what I said. Yeah, you did. You did. You, you know said, what? You know what? That, 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 that's an interesting variable that you brought into play. You know, the uh, the brother that has, his, that has his shit together that's stepping in front of the judge. Because there's always been this ongoing narrative, you know what I'm saying, in our community of, you know what, the guy has no shot, he has no shot in court at all. But how many of these dudes that, because a lot of them do care, how many of them actually get in front of a judge and actually have their shit together? That's the point. To where it's almost like, you know, and, and I, I get it. There definitely is a bias, you know what I'm saying, with black men uh, against these judges in these courtrooms. And we definitely have to play, we have to look into that X factor of, you know, bitter chicks out there, you know what I'm saying? Who don't give a damn how much you got his shit together. They just like, hey, I'm trying to get back at you. I'm using this child as a pawn, and I'm going to do what the hell I need to do. So, I mean, that's something we definitely have to look into, you know? But here's the thing. What does having your shit together mean? Because here, what, did you have your shit together when you were <clears> in a relationship <throat> with the individual and created the child? So why is it now that you now have to show that you have your shit together in order for you to be an active participant in your child's life? The reality of it is, is this. The only reason why you're in court trying to seek that is because the mother or whomever that you decided to have a child with is bitter. Because if they weren't bitter, you wouldn't be in court. So even if you didn't have a job, it sufficed the woman when you didn't have a job when she was laying up with you. So it shouldn't matter whether you have a job or not to see your child. It shouldn't matter. Mm, good point, good point. Whether to see your child, because you probably didn't have all of that when you was laying up with her. So why does it matter now? It only matters because they're bitter. At the end of the day, if people tend to separate the two, separate the fact that, you know what, 
the relationship is one thing. Being parents is another. And the problem is most people cannot separate the two. They can't. And because they can't separate the two is why the court system exists. Okay, so it, I'll, I'll answer that. Uh, it, you're right. It shouldn't be um, an issue. The job shouldn't be a requirement, right? But the truth of it is, in the way this court system is set up, it is. It is. I tell you, I'm not about, if, if this is what it is, this is what it is. You understand what I'm saying? Before, before, and again, I'm talking about in a situation where um, you might be married, right? I don't have experience in a situation where having, you know, um, children with a woman without the benefit of marriage and then having to go through that struggle um, with the court system because uh, I, that, I think that plays a big role. I think the marriage plays a big role in that situation because if you weren't married to this woman, right, I guess in the eyes of the law, it's like, well, okay, um, at any time you can continue to just walk out. I guess basically because of, you know, his history and what they've seen, what men have done or whatever. So they put this in place. They say, you know, you carried this, this, this child for nine months. You're a nurturer. Naturally, I guess you're supposed to be, you know, a, 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 a better parent at that age or whatever it is that the court thinks. My, my, my thing is, Shay, uh, I don't think that if you don't have a, a job or a way to take care of this child, to be honest with you, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't have a problem if, if they were restricted or, 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 or if, or if, or if you were under like kind of a super, a supervised type of uh, visitation. Because what does a job have to do with the love and nurturing that you're not, But, but, but say, but that, that would be cool if you guys were still together, but you're no longer together. We're talking about you being required as a woman. Right to be, you you are the uh, uh, um, uh, you have uh, full custody of this child. So everything that this child needs, you are responsible for, whether this guy contributes or not. So I say that if a woman, and that, that may not even been your choice. Let's say if a cat just walked out on you, right? So now you taking your stomach and all this responsibility. The least he can do, if he wants to come back into this child's life, is have a fucking job. You understand what I'm saying? That's the least you could do. Exactly, but at the same time, you're talking. You sounding like the bitter baby mama crew. And the reason why I'm, <laughs> that I, I, you said I sound like the bitter. Yeah, baby. and I'm saying this because here's the thing. Why do I need to justify to you about how I should be a parent? The reality of it is, is this: the man's sperm is what procreated the egg to create that child. Why do I have to be in a better position than possibly you are? Because I have the child. Because I bore the child. That doesn't, you have women that are out there on welfare. They're not taking care of their child. The system is taking care of their child. So my thing is they don't have a job. So are they deemed unfit because they don't have a job? Absolutely not. You know why? Because the system is taking care of their child. So what is the problem with me being able to love and nurture and tend to my child have to do with the fact of me having a job? My thing is this, you have some of the best men that can take care of their child that don't have a job necessarily that does not meet the status quo. And you're starting to sound like the white man's in the world. Because if you think about it, if you go back to slavery and you go back to the people in Africa and things of that nature, they didn't have jobs. We worked for the white man. And we still were able to take care of our child. And the thing was taking the black man out of the household and moving them so that the woman can be on their own with their child. So that's what happens when other men who is not the child's father ended up making a village. And as they see that man starts doing something positive, they remove that man. So now you're starting to go back in the mindset of the white man when you say, oh, it's okay for a woman to be able to take care of a child and a man has to prove that this is what he needs to have in order for him to be in a child's life. Bullshit. Yeah, see, here's the thing. thing. Here's the thing. I'm going to let Andy get in here real quick. And you're beating <laughs> on the child or you're doing all of these things then no, you should not have to prove yourself and for you to be a child's life. Who should? Did you prove yourself when you had sex to make the child? Let, let me, let me, let me, okay, you asked a whole bunch of stuff, right? So let me first go back and say that I was speaking from the perspective of a married couple, right? That's the perspective that I was speaking from. Now, we're talking about perspective of possible just this could be a one night fucking stand shit oh, well. you understand you could you and then the guy's like oh my god man yeah i you know there's no way in the world that i'm gonna have 
a child out here and I'm not in his life, right? But this is this is this is a child yeah. made. This is a child wasn't made out of no love. This is a yeah. child that's made of a, a one night stand. So here we go. The guy is going to make he, he possibly put it like this. He might not even be recognized as the father until there's a paternity test. Okay. Or, if, or if his name is on the child is on, on the birth certificate. You understand? Test. Listen, listen, listen what I'm saying. Listen what I'm saying. If you're not married, and I and, and nobody gonna tell me about this because I've I I've 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 seen it secondhand experience, firsthand experience. But uh so not first no one's not, well this is what I'm saying. No one's going to I know in New York State specifically, right? Let's say I have a one night stand with a married woman. Oh, a one night stand with a married woman. That man and a, and, is and, and, that a, and a child and a child comes from that one night stand, that little flame. Mm -hmm. Who's recognized as the father? The man who's married to him. And this is what I'm talking about. So if we're not talking about a situation with the benefit of marriage. It's different. So now let's go back to this guy and this fling and this one night stand. He wants to be in this child's life. Well, who the fuck are you? We don't even know who you are. So at least show me that you can take care of this child. Before I grant you custody of them. This is what I'm saying, Shay. You are not going to eliminate That's the responsibility. You're going from custody. That's what I'm talking Visitation, custody is the same thing. Well, where are you bringing them? Where are you let taking them? Where are you taking them? Where are you let, taking them? Let me help you out. You ain't let got me. a job, but where let are you taking this child? Are y'all okay, going to, gonna, wait a minute, hold on for a second. You going to spend this visit with a police station? Where you, where you going? Where you going to visit this child? I got one better. I got one better, right? They say it's cheaper to keep her. Correct? I agree. So now, you're married, you get a divorce, right? <laughs> Here's the headbanger with all of that. You still can go through the same exact issues as somebody with a one-night stand, even though you were married and you had that baby during the commencement of the marriage. As far as what? Because, see, in Pennsylvania, it won't be the issue. In the state of New York, it is. Because as far let me tell as what? You, let me tell you something. In the state of New York, if you have a baby, you are not automatically given custody rights of that child. Period. If you're married, you are. Excuse me? If you're married, you are. And this yeah, is what I'm saying. Matter, but the and, reality of it is, let's 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 be real. You're talking about the 10% maybe of people that if you're married, we had a child. And that's we had what I was talking about. This is what I was talking about, though. Well, we're talking about that's the, the small minuscule of the people that's in court. Gotcha. Um, gee, yeah, gotcha. That's yeah. And that's and that's why the other 90% better have a job before you petition to have uh, custody or see your fucking shit. Uh, Shay, listen, who are you? <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> Who is this guy? You are not married to this woman. Who the hell are you? Who are you? We don't know who you Just are. Other gentlemen, do you believe that you have to be able to prove yourself to be in your child's life? Yeah, see, you Hold on. And, and, Andy, Andy, here's the thing. Let me rephrase that question because I didn't say <laughs> prove yourself. I just said that if we don't know who you he doesn't know who you are. So when you come to the table, you are petitioning to get a visitation of this child. But we don't know who you are. So in order for us to know the person you had a child with, why do you have to go to court to do that? I just told you that it could have been a one night stand. I, uh -oh. Listen, listen to me, Shay. They are listen to me, man. I bet you, I bet you, next Saturday, a chick gonna get pregnant by a cat at, uh, after the club or something like that. I, I guarantee you. <laughs> club what difference that's matter of fact, my point is my point is once this woman has this child right and let's say let's say she's an unsavory chick right where <laughs> now that she has this child right oh shit well you know and let's the god forbid is somebody with some bread god forbid somebody who who's famous or whatever or got a look god forbid let's say she turns around and listen now i want to go hmm? when he pays child support say it again does he have to prove himself to pay child support she has to prove. Yeah, no, she, no. she. Just Shay. bring in your paperwork, and we're gonna tell you how much you're gonna pay for your child based off of who. The who is this guy? You cannot prove that this is his baby if you don't know who the hell he is. You're not married, so the so the state is not going to automatically consider that guy the father. You Jeez. must prove you're, it. You're talking two different things. Here. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, well, Andy, let's get into this real. Uh, okay. 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 Let me run. Let paternity. me run the let me run to Andy real quick. And see if he has anything to lend to this conversation. Andy, again, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> like, like Andy, like I said. So, do you believe that uh, that you know, in a situation where there's there's no benefit of marriage, um, that the child is born, and this, these these two people are not together, 
the the mother right now do no law don't do no no do no uh no court order nothing she is she has a child and now this gentleman wants to be in the child's life she's like no uh no i would rather it be just me and this child now this gentleman goes to court petitions to get custody or visitation right and she's yeah. saying by virtue of the fact that he just impregnated this woman that he should get uh, uh, this visitation or possibly custody. Do you do, do you agree with that? Do you agree with that? Without even being vetted, we don't even know who the fuck this guy is. Do you do you believe that that's what should happen, brother? I'm just just trying to figure out. Let's get a male's perspective here. Yeah, I, me honestly, yeah, I, I get what I get the angle that you're coming from in the sense of like that. I feel like both individuals would have to prove themselves, regardless. I don't think so. I, me personally, I feel like both people have to prove themselves because the the judge don't know them. So I would say the man and the woman in what? that sense. And I feel like it disproportionately goes to the women's favor. But me personally, I feel like both people need to prove themselves. That, that's it in a nutshell. Anye, um, you know, just the, the answer, you know, the now, again, the whole proving yourself thing for the woman, it's a little different because she already has a child. You understand what I'm saying? It's not like they're going to turn around and say... doesn't mean anything, though. What I mean by that is, what I mean by that, in the eyes of the court, they're not going to say, okay, these two people don't want to be together. Let me take the child, put the child in foster care until we figure out if these two people can can take care of the child. It doesn't work that way. The minute they split up, this woman still has the child. And it's not until court order says that we're going to take the child from her that the child leaves her possession. So what I'm saying is, maybe... We, they both need to prove themselves, but in the eyes of the law, it's pretty much going to fall on a man. And I agree that a man should should at least be able to prove you can take care of this child way before no, no, you no, act. I, I, Come on. I, I agree. I agree too. They should they should both have to prove themselves. But we have to we have to look at the fact that they're almost holding the man to a higher standard. Hey, you know we we understand you want to be in this child's life, but like you said, we don't know who you are. Prove yourself. Are you qualified to be in this child's life? And the courts are saying. One of the qualifications that we deem to be that you should be in, that you should be able to be in this child's life is you need to be bringing in some type of income. Just like the example that we used of uh, what Amazon and uh, people getting degrees. What mm -hmm. degrees just just prove that what uh, um, you could be dedicated to something for some for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, that's what the court, that's what the judge is saying. Hey, you know what I'm saying this man has a job. He's making a decent amount of money. You know, I know a little bit. Of, I know a little bit more about his story. You know what? That is a notch in his corner. But I just wanted to add this on a bigger scale because I can't really side with either side of this argument. I can side with, I, 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 I'm leaning towards both of y'all with this. But here's the thing. The problem becomes with our community is that we're even having to take these to these courts Absolutely. who don't give a fuck about our community, who don't give a fuck about our children, and Absolutely. at the end of the day, are cool with black families being split up and 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 they're taxing the situation so they're making money off of it too mm -hmm. so we got to come to terms within our own community of putting our differences aside putting emotions aside for the betterment of these children and stop going to their courts all together stop going to their courts getting married stop going to their courts through all this shit because when we go through their courts they are controlling our scenario and yeah. we keep having to go back to them to to resolve our situations we need to be resolving these situations within the community, within, with, with it, where they got to be with respect to elders or something like that. We need to create a structure to where it works in favor for the community and the children. Mm -hmm. these, these are not. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. That's why I said to him, why can't the person that had the child and the parent work it out? That's one of the things that I did say. I said, whether yeah. it's one night stand or not. Here's the thing. You can go, I've known many pedophiles that can prove themselves because they have a job and they have a place to stay. Yeah. Does it mean yeah. they're not a pedophile? I know many individuals, I know many females that have killed their children because the man is no longer with them. Does it mean that they weren't a suitable mate to have a child with? That just means they had a mental break. So going to court, anybody can go to court and on that 10-minute cycle that you're standing in front of the judge, if for that long... Exactly, you, yeah. You know, I can manufacture papers. I can manufacture yes. subs. I can manufacture a lease. I can manufacture all of these things. Does it mean that it's plausible doesn't mean that it's viable. I just gave you documentation to tell you who my character is. No, not at all. What I'm saying to you is this. If that person was good enough for you to lay down and have a baby with, right, unless it was made by force, like you were raped or whatever the case may be, that's a totally, that's a whole different dynamic. 
But if you decided that whether you were drunk or not, in your mind, that you laid down and had a baby with him and chose not to use protection and you got pregnant, and that man want to be a part of his child's life, life let him. Get to know that man on the aspect of you being nine months pregnant. Get to know that man when he wants to pick up the child. Okay, well, I'm going to bring the child to your house. Where you can get an idea as to where the child is at anyway. Because I can go to court and give you a list. Doesn't mean I live there. Kathy. Hello? Oh, so let, let, me, let me ask you guys this question. Can you hear me? Because you? it seems like... Um, Kathy. Y'all talking at the, at too the, loud, At the bottom man. of this, it's like the courts are holding the male to a higher standard even though they equally came together to make the child. So was the courts ultimately saying, hey, that was your decision to put your sperm in this woman. Absolutely. You, put your, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Right, and since, you put your sperm, since you put your sperm in this woman and this woman chose not to be with you anymore, now we're going to tax your motherfucking ass. You better have your shit together. Absolutely. So, Here's you know, the thing. We, we do know. Let's, let's, can we agree on this, that there are double standards? In this in this absolutely. fucking world, right? Oh yeah, okay. And there and there and there are some double standards that you know. I mean, we just you know have come to accept, right? Um, yeah. You know, okay. So, woman goes out there and sleeps with 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 ten men. She's a whore. Uh, man goes out there and sleep with ten men. You know, he's a stud, right? He's a whore. If that <laughs> is he's a stud, it was. That's a gay man, sir. <laughs> Did I say that? That's, excuse me. I mean, ten women. I'm probably. <laughs> <laughs> I, was about to tell, like, I didn't catch that. I didn't catch that. <laughs> and I'm so mad that you did, dude. I'm mad that you caught that. Ten, uh, a man sleeps with ten women. Excuse me, folks. Ten women, and he's considered a stud, right? So if that's a double standard, <laughs> we ain't gonna be able to get past this shit. If that was, a, if that's a, <laughs> if that's a double standard that we can accept, right? However unfair it may be, this is. The, this is the flip, in my opinion. This is one of those double standards that, you know, we have to accept however unfair it is. You understand what I'm saying? It's a double standard. I understand. It is. I understand that it is. But it's based off of the fact that, all right, uh, a system had to be put into place. It has to be. It's not perfect. The system is put into place. The best thing for motherfuckers to do is to not be involved with that system to begin with. Not get in, not have to deal with the system and then complain about how the shit is set up. Just get stay the fuck away from it. That's yeah, where the cheaper to keep it came from. Gee, but that sounds real good in, in theory, in practice. Because the reality of it is, is when you're in a relationship, who believes that they're going to end up in the court system when it's all said and done? The re here's, here's, here's the notch on that, right? I'm not one, and you know, gee, I'm not one that loves to go to child support. I will give a man the, the biggest opportunity there is to take care of their child without me having to get someone else involved. Perfect example, I gave the person that I was with plenty of opportunities. Listen, I, I kept it thorough. Listen, give me $150 a month. This is not going towards any bill. This is going to my bill. Let's be clear, I'm being honest with you. And when your son needs something, buy it. He had to get something as simple as long johns and told me I get it when I get it. At the end of the day, you're not gonna be able to control the situation. And so since you had that mentality and that disposition, unfortunately, now, and I'm and I beg and plead it. Just take care of your son. At what point do you now say, you know what? You take advantage of a situation like that, and now I have no choice but to put you in the system. Because I, ironically, now you're obey because the white man told you you have to take care of the child, and because they're gonna take care of your money, take your money anyway. So when the white man tells you you can do something, then it's okay for you to do it. But if your your person that you're working with or the person you had a child with is trying to work with you, you give them your ass to kiss because you're part of the bit of baby daddy crew too. I think, I think it's a little more it's a little more to it than that. When when the so called white man gets involved, you know, you got the possibility of incarceration, uh, uh you know, you know, su suspensions of licenses and things like that, you know. You can't do that as as the, the child's mother. You can't put me in jail, you can't, you know, uh suspend my license based on uh, stuff like uh, that. So what I'm no, no I, listen, first of all, again, this is me speaking this is me speaking from a commonsensical Cause I don't, I don't have, I can't relate to this personally. You understand? I'm talking about using common sense behind the thing. Why would uh, a man be so eager to just follow the rules when the white man says so, but he gave the child's mother such a hard time? And I just told you because that white man could put him in jail, could suspend his license, and and, and kind of do some things. You, you know, you, you can send him some text messages and blow up his Facebook. That's pretty much the, what you could do. But then that goes back to the deprogramming of black men. 
Because if you yeah. think about it and constantly putting them in the system, whether it be the criminal justice system or the, or the family court system, because the reality of it is, is this. As Af we, black men are some of the strongest men that are out there. Would you agree? Would you guys agree? Yeah. Strong. yeah are, you are, you are you kidding? Are you kidding? The trick so question? With that, with that being said, right, it is designed for black men to have this thought process and that mentality and to warp their brains to think exactly what you just said. I have to have some penal system in my head or over me in order for me to obey the rules and regulations that set forth for me. So in other words, I got to have this carrot dangled over my head for me to do the right thing. The thing is, they don't want to do it in that situation either. It's just that they don't want to go to jail even more. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want to go to jail. I don't want to pay child support. I don't want to deal with this chick, but I don't want to go to jail. You don't want to. You understand? Jail, you don't want to pay child support. Then do what you're supposed to do. But then, I, on the flip side, it. you have bitter baby mothers that who, do who, it. Who are you talking about me? Who are you talking about me? Well, I, as I just told you, I'm speaking from a commonsensical point of view. <laughs> this is not from personal experience. I'm talking about the guy that's doing what you what you're suggesting. I'm trying to jump into his head for a minute and kind of give you an idea of what he's thinking about. He hates you at this point. He hates what, you. He doesn't want to do any. Hmm? What does that have to do with now? You sound like you're joining a bit of baby no. people because that I, I'm, has I'm, absolutely <laughs> nothing to do with the child. I'm, not, I'm, what, I'm just trying to listen. I'm not saying that it's right, right? I'm just trying to it, trying to make some sense of it. You understand what I'm saying? I'm, I, it has nothing to do with the child. It has it's nothing to do with it. So you're making sense of something that's illogical. That's that's insanity. Uh, are you again? I'm trying to speak something from the position of. Okay, fellas. Um, right. So 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 this is this is this is my thing. At the end of the day, man. I I just love you. Jay. I just I just yeah, I love you too. But anyway, I just I just think I just think it's it's kind of it's 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 dangerous to kind of suggest that you know um, men don't have any rights. Um, you got to talk about which man you're talking about. You're not talking about the man that got all the shit together. You're talking about the man that got some shit going on with him. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so what does that have to do with the child? I'm, not t I'm talking about the system. The system has to make a decision, right? The system is not paying attention. First of all, you're a fucking number and he's a fucking number. And the child's Absolutely. a fucking number. So again, the system is looking at what's going on. They're not looking at you as human flesh, blood. They're looking at the situation. And, and it's, and it's first of all, before they, hold on real quick, before they even see you, they're looking at paperwork. You are a piece of paper with information on it until they see your face. So I'm talking and about, I, the, I'm talking about this. That's paperwork. Say again? I can look good on paper. I can look bad on paper. Doesn't that, mean that's who I am. That you can't expect the system to differentiate between that. You can't expect the system to sift through all of that. All you can expect the system to do is have uh, uh, have a, um, a situation in place and you guys want to come to the court, right? This is what has to happen once you get in there. I can't get into whether it's right or wrong, Shay. I just got to get into the fact that is this what the court wants from me? And if I'm not coming to court with that stuff, I can't be mad that the court is not ruling in my favor. That's all I'm saying, Shay. If they're not, if I don't bring, if I don't, they don't know this guy. I don't know how many times I can say it. They don't know who you are. And you come in here, you ain't got no fucking job. You ain't got no place to live. No way to feed this child. And you were trying to petition this court to do what? See my child. See him how? At a, at a, at a, at a, at a police precinct? Where do you want to see him at, Shay? You need Where? money to go to court? Who's going to be there? I'm going to send, I'm going to, okay, let me ask you. Let me ask you a question since you want to put your personal life in there, Missy. Uh, what I'm, if, let me ask this question. Let me ask, no, no uh, I'm, I'm not going to go too far. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. Let's suggest that um, the, 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 the child, the, uh, the man that you had one of, the, one of your, your children with, right? Uh, don't have a job. Mm -hmm. No place to stay. Right? Mm -hmm. No way to support this child. But he keeps calling saying he wants to see the child. Right? Sure. Now, now, here's the, now, here's the question. Here's the question. What you need from him in order for you to say yes? We ain't involved no court at all yet. Tell me what you need from him for you to say yes. Where would you like us to be so that you can see your child? 
oh, so now you have to be there in order for him to see the child. Well, if you're, take, if you're saying to me, listen to what you just said. We're I, not know, going I, I know what I said. I know what I said. I want to know what you said. So if you want me to, to meet you at the park. So you I don't want you to meet me nowhere. I want to see my child. I want to come you get him. Over the child. Say again. So you can come over and see your child. I'm going to come get him. I don't want to just see. I want to take him with me. Take him where? I'm going to take him anywhere. How are you going to know where I'm going if you ain't even going with me? Like he tell, tell me what's going to... No, listen. Tell me what's going to make you feel comfortable to let your child leave your house with this guy who ain't got no fucking job, who ain't got no fucking place to live, ain't got no fucking money to take care of this child. Tell me what's going to make you feel comfortable with letting him just go with him. Okay. You tell me. Okay, here's the thing. What would not make me comfortable is the mere fact that he doesn't have all of that. So, therefore, rather than me getting the courts involved, I now put an alternative in. What I said was you can still see your child, you can still spend time with your child, but because you don't have a place to stay and because you don't have a job, maybe you can come here and spend time with your child. Maybe that way you can take your child to the amusement park. Maybe you can take your child to the museum that's free. Regardless of that fact, right, I know that there's... Let me, let me give you a perfect example, G. Let me throw something at you, mm -hmm. right? Um, I've seen, unfortunately, in my, my walks of life, I've seen women kill their own children Right? Because a man didn't want to be with her. I seen a, 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 a step parent kill their child, the man that they're with child, because they want the, the relationship that the baby mother and the baby father had together. And to alleviate that situation, they killed the child. There's people that's out there that do all kind of crazy things. The reality of it is, is this. I've seen people molest their own children. I've seen people rape their own children. So I cannot say to you with de decisive certainty that because you have a job, because you have a house, because you have money, that you won't danger my child. What I'm saying to you is this. Yes, the prop it, it lessens the probability of you doing something to the child, but I've seen homeless people, right? Let me be clear with something. Let me, like, since we want to do a little bit of self-explosion, there's times that I didn't have a place to stay. Did that make me a, a bad parent? No, me and my children were homeless, but at the end of the day, me and my children were homeless. So now, does it give the right to say, come take my child, or you can't see your child because I don't have a place to stay? Does that make me an unfit mother? Not to say, it's not to say that you're necessarily... Answer a, the question. I am, I am, I am. It's not to say that, it's not to say that you're an unfit mother. It's right. just at what I'm saying is at this point in time, you're just not capable of taking care of that child the way that the child and needs to be taken care of. My child is still going to school. And hence why they have shelters. You do know that, right? So people that are in shelters are deemed... Right? They, they are deemed uh, what? For purposes, right? Would you guys agree? You, you if said... you're a homeless shelter, you're homeless, right? Mm -hmm. Is CYS coming to take your child? Not C we, we ain't talking about CYS. See, here's the thing. We're not, we're not talking about CYS. I'm talking about the father. Explain to me that you're going to be in... So, in listen, yes, who, wait, like, okay, let me... A homeless shelter and you still can't take my child and you may have a place to stay. And I may be in a woman's shelter with my kids and you may have your... My kids, because you still can't deem me unfit. I, I, but again, I'm not talking about taking the child from you. I'm talking about getting my just do my right to see my child even if it's a scheduled situation i'm gonna see him every time that i'm supposed to see him that's, that's what i'm talking about disagree on this because i'm just gonna say to you i don't think that a man should go through any woman should have to go to mm -hmm. so we're gonna agree to disagree whether i chose to lay down with this man and like I said, if we're dealing with a rape or something, that's totally different. But if I decided to stay with this man and use unprotected sex and have sex with this man and produce the child, that guess what? I have nine months or whatever months or whomever months for this man to get to know his child or me to get to know this man. If I choose not to utilize that opportunity, that's on me. That's it. But I'm not going to tell him he can't take his child by virtue because what? I produced it because I pushed it out? No. He has every bit of right because without him, guess what? The child wouldn't be here. Yeah, and, 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 and let me let me let me just throw let me just throw this in real quick. Um, and that's why it is going to be so important for us to develop some type of council within our own community who understands our scenarios and what we go through. Because again, 
you know, with the courts, they don't give a fuck about these scenarios. Oh, you're in a homeless shelter? Oh, oh, hell no. You shouldn't even have the child. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't give a damn about our experience. All they care about is capital at the end of the day. And we gotta be honest, you know, there is a divide between, you know, our men and our women. You know, um the, the arguments that you guys posed today were a perfect example of such. So we're gonna need people that look like us, that have come from our scenario and our environments to intervene. And that's why some type of elder counsel is gonna be necessary down the line, you know, to keep it out of these courts. That's that's that that's that's my main focus, to keep it out of these courts. Mm-hmm. Andy, give me a uh, and, and, and culturally, this is not even us anyway. Like children is not there's no nuclear family. The humanity is supposed exactly. to be like a whole village all together. So a- it's like that's the huge problem with this in the situ the whole situation. You're supposed to be with grandmas, you're supposed to be yeah. with cousins and all this yeah. other shit. This whole mom and dad shit is the problem. And this is why criminality happens, and this mm-hmm. is why a lot of people get dehumanized. So it's like well, fuck fuck that shit. And I agree, I'm the end with Arnie's point. It's like I agree with that. Like we need something outside the legislative body because the legislative body is gonna look at motherfuckers as like numbers, and it's like they're gonna exactly. die, and they're not gonna pick up on the intricacies of like, oh, okay, you know, I play ball with my son or I read with my son. They, that's you can't quantify that. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's, point. that's a good point. Well, let me say this. Um, I think we're gonna put a cork in this topic here. Um, very, very informative. So, you know, I, I appreciate that back and forth, but, um, I want to go ahead and move on to, uh, um, some more stuff. Uh, something else that was interesting was, um, this is going to go complete spin. We're off this and we're going to run into like a, a sports situation about Carmelo Anthony. And the people have been yelling about Carmelo Anthony for uh, a little while now. It seems like his career is pretty much over now. Um, you know, or at the very least, you know, winding down. Um, uh, I want to know, man, um, how do you feel about Melo's legacy? Um, I mean, he started out in Denver. Um, um, yeah, some individual um, accolades as far as scoring and things like that. Didn't win any titles. Um, I think maybe he won one, uh, never won a playoff. Um, no, I'm sorry. Uh, what was it? One one year they went to the finals. I think they had another final, yeah. uh, the Western Conference final, whatever, when they had Iverson and stuff, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I'm a Knicks fan. And when when Amari Stoudemire came to the Knicks, and you know he 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 breathed he had breathed some life back into um, that franchise. You know, I kind of thought that when they put some pieces around them, things you know would kind of work out. And then of course you know the big trade with uh, Carmelo Anthony. And I always remember around this time because uh, he, he he really made it clear, like, you know, I'm not giving up anything. I'm not budging. This is what I need. If you got to give up five players for me, you know, I'm that good. And and, and, they, and, they, and, they, and they did it. I mean, they did that shit. Melo came over here, and ever since he came in this, this thing, it was just terrible. You know, he had a couple of good games, you know, a couple of little splashes here, right? But he took the shine away from stat, in my opinion. He took the shine away from stat, and ultimately, they wanna push, he wound up pushing Stat out. But if you're going to push Stat out, you need to go ahead and make sure you bring a championship to this team. Something. And he didn't do that. I think he held the Knicks hostage through the years with uh, uh, Phil Jackson. And then um, ultimately, they shipped him out of here. They got him out. He went to OKC. Um, he didn't want to conform there, just like he didn't want to conform um, with the Knicks, just like he didn't want to conform with the Nuggets. Um, things didn't work out, and they shipped him over to Houston. Goes over to Houston, same shit. He don't want to come off the bench. He don't want to conform. And now uh, it seems like they're getting ready to get rid of him. Then I think we saw LeBron James had a uh, they had an interview with LeBron James, and they asked him that would he go ahead and you know try to see if getting Carmelo Anthony over to the Lakers. And he said something about uh, yeah, we got 15 spots, they all filled and stuff. You know, so it doesn't look like he's petitioning. To get his, his, and you know, they're good friends and stuff. So, I mean, I want to know, like, what do you guys think of his legacy? Because I think, you know, I, I, I think I I can't stand Melo. That's my opinion. I, what, 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 what do you guys feel about Melo, uh, Carmelo Anthony? And he, he, he was a great player, but his career is always going to be looked at as, you know, he chose the money over winning, you know. A lot of our best superstars in the league, they had to make financial sacrifices 
to gain to 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 get some type of uh, competitive team around them to win a championship. Mm-hmm. And we never really saw that with him. Hey, I get it. Get your money. I get it. But if you look back over, like I want to say, the last 15, 16 years, I think he's made the most out of the NBA than any other player. So, I mean, you know, what, what, what did you choose? You chose the money. So you sacrificed the part of your legacy. But then again, what are you in for it anyway? Are you in, in it for the money? Are you in it for the legacy? Are you in it for the combination of the two? To be honest with you, I thought once he came out of college, he was going to be LeBron's greatest rival. Right. But, I mean, as we can see, it didn't turn out that way because of decisions that he made. A lot of people say that his game is a very selfish style of play. And in this current NBA, his style of play is kind of outdated. You know, he hasn't changed up his game to evolve with the way the game is played now. So, again, the me, me, me mentality. And I don't know if I could say a multimillionaire has suffered, but I guess in his world we can look at it as he suffered somewhat because of that. It's interesting that you brought up um, choosing the money because I was thinking if he was choosing the money, then, you know, then you would just do whatever the hell the team asked you to do. If it's about the money, what difference does it make what they're asking you to do, you know? But that's why I kind of think it was more to it than just the money with him, um, that ego. You know, he you know he thinks yeah. that he is better now um, than he really is. So, you know, Andy, what you think about this cat's legacy, man? Um, I remember when he left the Knicks, uh, I put something on Facebook because I was so disgusted about the way he held them hostage, man. Um, <laughs> what do what you, what you, what you feel about this cat and his legacy, man? You can't spell me without I, I'm trying to Can't make say mellow without me. The mellow was so boring and I always like I always forget that he came in the same time LeBron did. Like right. it's like right. he's just like uh, okay. I remember my brother had his bum ass sneakers. I'm like, why you got this bum ass nigga sneakers? <laughs> so I was like, whatever, like to me, there's nothing to say about Carmelo Anthony. He's a great player, and it, I always, you always got to give kudos to anybody that plays it professionally. They're obviously good, but in regards to like team dynamic and all this shit, eh, you're forgettable. You're gonna be one of those. You're gonna be like, you know, that nigga that do the just for men. There's like a fucking old football player. I think this is Carmelo Anthony gonna be. He gonna be the nigga. Oh, okay. Hey. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't even know what you're talking about, but that's hilarious. No, no, it's not the NFL. It's a, there's a basketball player. I forgot his name. He does like... It is. Who are you talking about, Aye? Who are you talking about? I, it might be Carl Malone. <laughs> is it Carl Malone? Oh, it's maybe. It's Carl Malone. No, it's it's an older dude. I don't know. He kind of looks like Joe Jackson a little bit. I don't know. I can't. I don't remember his name. Fuck. <laughs> he doesn't look like... What like he it? got the Joe Jackson eyes. Like, I can't, I can't describe it. I don't know. He just... Well, yeah, I can see Melo doing... um. You know, some glad bag commercials or something like that, because that's probably more his speed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 Shay, you know, you want to weigh in on this Carmelo Anthony situation, man? How do you feel about? How do you feel I, 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 about? I, 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 you want to weigh me in on something that I have absolutely nothing to know or talk about, right? But the reality of it is, is you're making them relevant now. So well, and here's the thing: I don't have a problem. Let me finish what I'm saying. Okay. See, I thought you you stopped. I'm sorry. You took a breath, and I I, I thought that was an opportunity. (laughs) Go ahead. As much as people want to say he's irrelevant, we all make him relevant because we keep talking about him. So I know nothing about his game except that he was very galala and all this other stuff. And we talked about that pre, you know, coming on the show. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is, you know, we make him relevant. So at the end of the day, no matter how trash he is, no matter how much of a me he is, player he is, we still making them very, very relevant. Well, I, here's the thing. Um, Melo's a millionaire. We, we, it's not like we can take that oh, from him. Oh, I know he, that. It's not like he's going to be, he's going to starve or he's going to have, you know, his lifestyle is going to still be the way it is. But I'm talking about basketball Please. right now, right? I'm talking about basketball. Now, he may turn out, you know, to leave basketball and, you know, because of investments and things like that, turn out to do very, very well, you know what I'm saying, outside of basketball. But I'm talking about his legacy as far as basketball is concerned, you know, because he's up against, which we just mentioned, right, LeBron he, James. This is, this is the class he came out of, you know? But here's the thing. Even somebody like me, I mean, I know basketball, but I can't tell you, I don't follow them, if you will. Mm-hmm. But even somebody like me that's not, don't know basketball, when you think of certain names, you hear, these are the names that you constantly, repeatedly hear. So although you may talk about the intricacy of basketball and how he played and how he did this, he, how he did that, if his model was to set out to let his name be known, he accomplished that. So if his mission was to make money and to make his legacy live, he accomplished that. Because somebody like me that doesn't even pay attention to basketball know who the hell Carmelo Anthony is. 
know that he played for the Knicks. I may not know the intricacy of how many, you know, his points per game or all of these things, but I can tell you something about him. Tell me some of these new players that's coming out that people are talking about that's not relevant. I can't tell you nothing about him. But if his mission was a me mentality, right, and I'm going to let people know who I am by all costs, whether it just be me, guess what? He set out to meet his goal. And, and, because, this, and, and, doing and this is the reason why whenever I see one of these memes on Instagram <laughs> or something, you know, about him, what, you know, they, they say, they said the Golden State Warriors just signed Camilla Anthony to, what, $15 an hour in a bus t- <laughs> a bus pass or something like that. That's, <laughs> I'm, I'm liking that two times. And then it was another one where uh, um, <laughs> I think uh, there was a basketball player leaning on leaning on a trash can or something like that. And it says, uh, yo, why they leaning on Carmelo Anthony like that or something crazy like that? And see, those uh, are the memes that I double tap. You came in this game with that <laughs> selfish mentality, and now at the end of your career, they are tearing you up, and I enjoy everything about it. Let's go ahead and move on from this Carmelo crap and move on to some sad news. Stan Lee, Marvel, uh, passed away. Uh, was it last week? For the age of uh, 90, what was it? Uh, uh, was 95, 95, 95 right? Um, yeah. Here's the thing. Um, I wasn't a big comic book guy. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, but I, it, it just wasn't, man. <laughs> you know, I, no, no disrespect, but, you know, the comic book, you know, and like nerd was synonymous when I was coming up. No disrespect to anyone who read comic books, but that's how, I, <laughs> that's, that's how it felt. You know, with me, you know, uh, or just uh, let me not say nerd, like artistic, more of the, you know, uh, artsy cats who was involved with stuff like that used to be, um, you know, of course, in, in my neighborhood or whatever. But um, I wasn't big on comic books. But later on in life, you know, once, uh, you know, they started making these movies, I think, what, like 97, I had saw that uh, first Hulk movie with um, what's that cat's name who played in uh, Fight Club. But anyway. I saw that 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 whole no, that was movie. the second one. That was, uh, that was Ed, Ed Norton. Ed Norton, right? Okay, right. Well, that's the first scene. That was you the know, second one. I tell you, there's so much I know about this, this comic book stuff. But um, you know, and as you can see, since then, you know, and even before then, like every year, like two or three movies with the Marvel banner pop out. Um, Stan Lee had a real uh a real real influence, man. And um, as you can see on social media, a lot of the outcry was uh you know um, a lot of people were uh you know taken back by this, but, um, except for one individual, Bill Maher, you, you anybody follow Bill Maher? Uh, you know, Bill Maher, Bill Maher, real oh, time Bill with Maher, Bill yeah, Maher. Yeah. You familiar with Bill Maher? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I watched yeah, that TV show I on HBO. Show. Okay. The yeah. talk show, you know, real, real big, you know, Democrat supporter, hates Trump and all that other stuff. And, uh, once Dan Lee passed, uh, he was, uh, I think he has a blog and in his blog, he was, uh, kind of mentioning how, um, you know, saying some things that people kind of considered pretty disrespectful, um, you know, about, you know, the whole comic book situation. Basically, his, his the long story short, he was kind of feeling like what comic books, um, you know, had, had done um, for a generation is turned him into individuals who kind of felt like, um, you know, a, a, a shit that normal adults would do. Um, instead of considering it just things that adults do, they consider it this term adulting. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever heard of the term adulting when people refer to something as adulting? Okay, well, is basically he was saying that these guys are sitting here reading comic books and where after a certain age you're supposed to graduate to books without pictures. Um, they're still fucking with the comic books and it went as far to the movies and things like that and they're in this like fantasy world where um, when it comes time to start dealing with things that real adults have to deal with, um, they can't because they're so caught up in this uh, comic book world. I'm not sure if that's yeah, not going Stan Lee. Yo, that's a, if, if he made that argument, that's such a trash argument. That's Here's one the, of the most stupidest fucking arguments I've ever heard in my life. All right. Now, why, why, why you think that? <clears throat> because there's always going to be stories. You're going to be, in, as a human being, you're intrigued by images and all that. Like, mm-hmm. because it, it's a nigga that's wearing a leotard or tights, you think it's anything stupid. Like, but I mean, I'm not going to listen to Bill Maher. He's an atheist, so he's not going to understand. Mm-hmm. Of, mm-hmm. He's not going to have an understanding of st- stories and myths and shit that has been moving fucking human civilization since motherfuckers was standing upright. So what the fuck? Like, because we're able to see now it's Stan Lee and he's doing comic books, how is it any different from motherfuckers having fucking ISIS or fucking uh, Osiris in, in fucking Egypt. Like, like mm-hmm. I don't understand, like, 
stories is always gonna be stories. There's, there's bitches that watch fucking scandal. What, what, what fucking difference does it make? Honestly, got you, got you. I don't think it's a trash, trash argument. Right. Got and you. Not to mention, you you gotta think about the powerful things that comic books have actually done for individuals with speech delays and people that can't read and being able to tell a story just by watching things and flipping through comic books. Because I remember if you think back when we were in grade school and now I'm aging myself and we had to make something on a little piece of paper, right? And you would have to flip through it and watch how the dynamics move, like the moving parts, like you start the man on one end of the paper and then you start gradually moving them over. And then they take, take the pages and flip through them and you start seeing how the whole thing comes to life. I think that even taking something that simple and you taking, like me being in a, in a human services field and we'll tell the kids that even can't read, just pick something up to read it. Even if it's just to look at the pictures and gotcha. the story because it's about using your imagination. And the reality of it is I think that that's what he brought to the table about being able to expand your imagination and being able to utilize that. Then ordinarily some people that could not read words in the book without pictures couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Andy, what you think? I mean, uh, Anya, how you feel, man? Same thing, man. You can't not comic books, man. That's a big part of, uh, of history right there. You know what I'm saying? That has given a lot to a lot of people from the imagination standpoint to even self-esteem, man. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we talked some time ago about the whole Black Panther thing. Right. Now we have a whole generation of Black kids looking at, you know, a Black superhero like him. So what does that do for a child's self-esteem as far as you know, there are no boundaries in life. I could do whatever I want to do. I could be a hero to whatever I consider to be a hero in my life. So, I mean, I, I can't knock that at all, you know? Man. Well, I got you. I tell you what, man, um, either way, man, uh, you know, Stan Lee, uh, we can't even begin to, like, talk about the impact that he's made on, you know, generations of, of people and stuff. So, uh, uh, sad to see that... Uh, you know, a mind like that is gone, but I do believe that Marvel will continue uh, pumping up oh. these movies because, you know, these things have definitely been doing uh, big, big numbers. But, folks, we had a great like show. Uh, you know, um, touched on some real things, man. Got heated with my girl Shay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get her back because, uh, you know, she's not going to be doing this kind of show, man. But uh, uh, either way, man, you know, like I said, you know, check us out on YouTube. You like, share, subscribe. Of course, all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Look up the Reality Guru Show. Uh, got my man, Andy, Andy, Anya, Shay, and I'm G. Cleave, Reality Guru. Take care.